Hey everyone, Miranda Patron here with you again to do a rainbow mandala today, which I think it's the weather is nice and we've been doing some rainbows on the Facebook page and stuff like that. So I thought I'd show you how to do a fun little rainbow on this nice round stone I have here. So first you want to find the center of your stone. I generally just eyeball it, but you can measure to find the center of your stone. And I just like to make a little mark so when I look back at my paint palette and then come back to this, then I haven't lost where I'm going to place my paint. And this little rainbow stone is going to have white for the center, and I'm using the Americana paints. This is Snow White Titanium. And I'm going to use the dotting tools to show you all today because I think a lot of people have these styluses and um, there's been some frustration about the brushes, I, I guess. So I will try to do more with the dotting tools since that's what more people have. And I also sell these in my Etsy shop. These ones I have on an angle so it's easier for me to see where I'm placing the dots. And then I just pour my paint in my palette when I dip. I'm going to get a ton on, a bit on it. And then I'm just going to dab it now. If you want a larger circle or dot than your tool allows for, all you have to do is just roll the paint, push it around into a circle into the size dot that you want. Now you can see the fluidity of this paint too is kind of like batter, a little bit thinner than batter. Um, just to relate it to how thin you actually need your paints to, to do the dots. Okay, so now with that same white, I'm actually going to steal from the center. And you're going to make like a plus sign. So, plus sign like this. So those are your 90 degree angles. And then we'll do a little dot halfway between each of those that we just put down at our 45 degree angles to complete that first round of dots here around the center. Alright, so the next color I'm using is True Red. And we're just going to put a tiny row in between the white ones that we just put down. So we're not going too much larger in size. So these are just in between the white, white ones that you put down. Alright, so next we are going to use a little bit of this Royal Fuchsia. And we're going to go in between each of the true red dots that we made, so it would be over the white. The thing about rainbows too is like if you're having trouble with combinations for colors then rainbow is always a winner. You know any combination of pastel rainbow colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, then you're all set. And you don't have to worry about what colors go with which or how many of each or which different shades. and. Just pick a rainbow palette and then you go for it. Alright, so next up we have this nice coral blush. Because we kind of go pink and reds, then orange. And incidentally, coral is the color of the year for Panatone colors this year. 
and it goes with so many different color palettes. It's really versatile. It's so much fun, bright, happy. I'm not usually a big fan of orange, but the coral is definitely a winner as far as accenting and it goes with blue and purple and the pinks. We're just tucking it in between that royal fuchsia that we just put down so you can see it makes like a nice contrast with that. All right, the next one is just straight coral. And it's just a shade lighter. So you're gonna have zones of the colors basically, you know, the pink and red zone. This is kind of the orangey peach coral zone. And if you don't have all the shades, you can always just add a little bit of white to the darker one, the coral blush. And just mix in a little bit of light white and it will turn the next shade lighter for you. Okay, so now I have this really nice um, primary yellow, and we're just going to put a couple little ones using a smaller dotting tool in here like this. And this is a nice bright yellow too. It also has great coverage. I put it on pretty thick, so I've never had to do more than one coat. Same with most of the decorts. I almost never have to do more than one coat. Probably the only one I ever have is the neon orange that they have in their multi-surface, and that's the only, only one. So there's our yellows. Okay, the next one is a multi-surface, but it's a great lemon zest yellow. Nice bright pop of sunshine color. I absolutely love this one. And I'm going to go with a larger dotting tool. Some of the multi-surface ones you have to just mix a little bit more, but they still have great consistency out of the bottle. Just takes a little Shaking and mixing a little bit, it's not a big deal. And we're gonna put a nice big sunshiny dot right here at the top of the two yellows that we put down. Okay, so I'm actually going to steal from the yellow while it's wet and do a ring around of tiny yellows.
Okay, and I'm going to go back to that darker yellow, the primary yellow. And we're just going to do a straight swipe in. So just above where your row of dots are, kind of line it up just above there with a small dotting tool because you don't want a ton of paint. And just slowly drag out one of your lines, I mean one of your dots, into a line. So you've probably seen a lot of people calling them swipes, swooshes, whatever. All you're doing, you can do this with your dotting tools. You just start off with a dot where you would have a dot and you drag out the paint. And you can practice on paper first just to kind of see how much paint you need to load onto your tool to know how far it will drag out for you. And it just takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get the hang of it, I promise. And just take your time. And I've said this before, but it sounds like, or they look like they're done quickly, or it sounds like a swoosh or a swipe. It sounds like it's done fast, but you don't have to be quick about it. Just take your time, enjoy the painting, and just put it down and gently drag it down to that orange coral dot that we have here. And then that kind of gives us some sunshiny rays there. Now I'm just debating, I think because we have the light yellow here, I'm going to go with a white just to, off, just to offset the light yellow here and the dark here, but you could also go more with the dark because that would contrast against the light. So you don't want to just drown everything out, so kind of switching up shades will help you to kind of collaborate the design together. I'm tripping over my words today, but you get what I mean, I think. So I'm going to grab white just because that'll help contrast. And I'm just going to do the same and I'm going to make the points come together at the bottom just slightly. So you can see how the white really shows up against those. But if you had done the dark as well, the dark yellow just done three of those, it would have gone against the light and yellow as well, so you would have it still show up pretty easily in there. Okay, so now I'm thinking about your next color. We're going green because we're doing our rainbow progression, but you can either choose colors that complement it that are lighter and go lighter with like a turquoise type green, or go really bold and go dark against the, the yellow. They have a lot of options that, like I said, with going with the rainbow. So I'm debating right now whether I want to go light or dark. Okay, I usually have a time where I go dark, so I'm going to go lighter with this and go for a light type of turquoise green maybe here. All right, so sea breeze. Let's go with sea breeze. And above our 
wipes that we just created. I'm going to put a large dot of this sea breeze, which is kind of like a light turquoise. So you're blending your zones kind of a blue and green, but that that's okay to do too. And this is a smaller stone, so actually you could go over this or over that either way. I think I think I'm going to go over the swipes. I don't know why. I, it's just in my head that it would be better for the design. I think too if we do dots around this then they won't kind of mix into that lemon zest yellow that we have. And this kind of looks like flowers planted actually. <laughs> so we have our little sea breeze flower top here. And this is a large size dotting tool but it doesn't go as big as I want the size dot, so I'm just pushing the paint around in a circle. You can be a paint pusher too. If you're just drawing, we've all drawn circles for years, just push it around, draw that circle. The biggest thing with dotting is just the paint consistency. Your spacing will come, but once you get the right paints and the right consistency, so it's that fluid paint, it moves way easier for you and it's gonna go where you want it a lot easier That's our sea breeze. Now the same that I did with the lemon zest I'm going to do with this. Let's just steal from our dot. And start going around with the progression of dots here. And for the ones that I want kind of the same size up here, I'm just re-dipping, re-dipping. And then when you want to let them get smaller, you just don't dip it again, and you let the paint run off the tool. So you don't need multiple tools to get the smaller dots. It's just same size, same size. Then about that one, just let it go and let the paint come off, run off the tool. So they will get progressively smaller as you go around. And that's just another thing that takes practice to see how big your dots come out, how small they'll go when you let the paint run off.
It doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to come up and measure your little dots here and go, oh, well, they're bigger on this side when you get down that far. The fifth dot, they're not the same size. It's going to look great. So don't be too hard on yourself. You're up close and personal with this stone and it's in your face. And sometimes you might need to just get up, walk away, and then you come back and realize, wow, that's really pretty. <laughs> and you're not going to see all the flaws because right now, you know, you're up in it. You're working on it or you're maybe even counting how many dots you have on one side and it's not the same as the other but don't get so caught up in that this is supposed to be kind of meditative and enjoyable not stressful and it's really hard for those of us who are perfectionists sometimes to just let that go um when i first started i counted and i held my breath and it was i noticed myself just getting tense and i wanted it to just be enjoyable so just kind of let it go it doesn't have to be perfect because you'll come back to it and look at it and be like oh this is actually really lovely. So don't be too hard on yourselves. It's a good life lesson. All right, so that little sea breeze there. Why don't we go with some Bahama blue next? It's just a little bit darker and it gets a little bit of that blue in there for us. And we'll make another round of dots around our stone here. So I just I dipped my tool again and I knew it was going to be a larger dot. So I just dropped it over here where you know the dots are larger from the start. And that way I didn't go large, small, then to another larger dot. You kind of drop some paint off either on your palette or a paper towel or another ring. Just so that you can get your sizing adequately done around. So obviously if I'm having to go back and dip it on a tool, it's hard because you're going to be larger. Whereas if you're using paint brushes, you can put just push harder and use, you know, pressure to apply this for the size dots. But the dotting tools, it's a little more of a challenge. Not impossible, but a little more of a challenge getting them to a more, um, a more uniform size. In that time I picked up just enough to do that whole side, so just depends. And with the angle in the tool as well, it does, it picks up a little bit more paint. So kind of like the brushes where you don't have to keep going back to dip as much. Sometimes you do, but not as much. So let's see how that one was. The second dot was a little bit bigger. Not the end of the world. I'm not going to worry about it. If you wanted this one to be bigger, you can just kind of add more to it like that. While they're still wet, it makes it easier. And see, I'm already running out to small dots, so I can even steal from the wet ones. And then you have less than you would had you gone to the palette to add paint. Alright, it's coming along. Alright, so we're going to go one more ring darker here with a peacock teal. We started light 
and we'll progressively get a little darker towards the outside here. You can see the multiple rings, you know, lining them up. It just starts to create a really nice full design there. A lot of you have been writing to me about the steadiness of your hands, or the steadiness of mind. <laughs> um, I have some neurological issues, but you can paint two-handed. You'll see in a lot of my videos, let me just get this out of the way so I can show you. They have bridges that you can set your wrist, your wrist on, and that will help steady you. But also with dotting, I kind of just apply a gentle resistance with my other hand so that you know if you're shaking a little bit you're not going to waver you use your other hand to just kind of steady I mean don't grip the heck out of it so tight you will sh everyone's going to shake if you grip it so tight so just kind of relax your hands and then just let the tool do the work and you're gently just kind of guiding it with your other hand so you'll see that I do use two hands sometimes and for those of you who have been asking, you know, what can you do about that? You can't dot because you're shaky. I have found that to be very, very helpful. So now you'll all be looking out for that. <laughs> but uh, actually I did have one or two people notice that I do, I do paint two-handed sometimes. So if you're just feeling shaky or in the days where I've had too much caffeine, I get shaky, but you know, we get a little older, I have some spinal issues, that doesn't help with staying steady, so that kind of thing too, it's helpful. And I know there's some awesomely creative people out there who have made their own bridges, just put together some wood and made it the height they needed for their wrist where they felt comfortable, or they had their husbands kind of measure and cut it out for them and work together as a team on that, which I think is such a beautiful thing. <laughs> Um, but there are people who are selling them on Etsy too. If I can, when I post this video, I'll try to see if I can find a link for the painting bridges and post that in the description as well. I hope that'll be helpful for a lot of you that have been asking. You can see too the lovely progression that's starting now because we did the light to dark and it's that ombre and like a reverse ombre kind of look and I'm gonna steal from these and I think we can fit one more ring around do I want to do that or do I want to pop a green down in there see that's what goes through my mind these thoughts that I just try to put them out there for you too so you can hear Kind of the thought process as I go. Let's give it a little kick down in here to just kind of put our green color down in there. So I'm going to use the multi surface. I have an apple green. It's a nice, nice bright. These are what the multi surface bottles look like. They have the black label. And this one has just a great pop of green color so we'll tuck that down in here just above our yellow and you want to 
I forgot to say this before, but you want to, when you're going to put a design element in, you just kind of want to look around your whole design to make sure that that is going to fit. Because sometimes our spacing gets off. Mine does, anyway. <laughs> so you just want to make sure it's going to fit in each space where you would like to, to present it. And it's not the end of the world. This space right here is a little smaller than this space. So you can, you know, make this dot just a little bit bigger to fill that space. It's not a big deal. This paint is a little, is a little bit more of a different texture because it's one of the multi-surface ones. So it's, I just got to scoop it up here. It still works the same too with pushing it around in a circle if it, the size tool you picked is too small. Oh, I'm glad we did that. Nice little green contrast in there. Now we can go for a darker blue. So kind of we have the green zone there and just went with the turquoise to kind of blend it together and now they have this awesome tropical blue which is part of the new Deco Art Americana line. They came out with 10 new colors this year, so this tropical blue is one of those. And it's like a, oh, just a gorgeous, I think it's one of my new favorite colors. It's just so rich, like an aquamarine. Just, it's beautiful, you'll see. We put it down here and it's just enough of a shade darker than the color we just used before it that it'll give us that contrast that we wanted here. Yay, that's so pretty. I have such an affinity for the ocean and ocean colors that I'm really drawn to these blues, although, you know, blue's never really been my favorite color. It still is such a draw. I picked up too much paint. I'm just going to drop some off over here. And that's all you have to do. It helps you keep your size progression of your dots. Especially using the stylus tools just because you're double dipping, constantly dipping. More than double dipping. <laughs> just constantly re-dipping the tool to reload. And see now, because we put that green down in there, it helps give that division of color with the pop of green to the progression of blue. It really shows up nicely down, tucked in there. But that's one of the things, you know, it doesn't have to be rocket science to pick out colors. Just go for rainbow. It's always, always a win. And just put enough that you have a good chunk of each color in each band of ring of dots that you put around. And it's almost a no fail design choice, color choice. And the, the thing about the rainbow palettes again too, you know, Easter's coming up, go with pastels if you want to go for that more trendy theme. Christmas time, you know, go with the bold dark greens and reds. 
or winter, you know, if you want the richer colors. Okay, one more. One thing too, I just realized you can see it in the camera view, but I usually work on multiple pieces at a time so that you're not wasting your paint. A lot of people ask how, you know, why I put so much in my palette, but I usually do multiple pieces too. And you can also put a wet paper towel that'll help keep your paint. But usually I'm waiting in between for each ring of dots to dry so that they don't bleed into one another. You know, if you constantly want them close together, then you want to let them dry a little bit. And that gives me time to just work on another piece in between. And not waste paint. <laughs> Alright, so at this point I am debating whether or not I want to go with one more ring of blue, like a true blue. And then kind of put our, our purple zone next. Or we could leave it at, at this and start purples, depending on how many purples you wanted to add. Um, I'm kind of liking the blue, how there's a lot more of it on here, the dominant as the dominant color. I'm kind of really enjoying that, so I do think I'm going to do one more ring of this bright blue. This is one of the multi-surface again. smaller with these ones just so we have a different sort of more elegant ending to the blue design and then you have sort of a larger dot at the top so it kind of creates a petal like a petal flower petal type effect so it comes to a point. So much larger at the top dot here, like here, this. And then really let the paint be gone as you go around with the smaller dots. And that is easier with the multi-surface ones as well, because they hold on to the dotting tool a little bit less. I still have too much on here, so I'm going to drop some off over here and then let it go around.
So if you did make a mistake on the stone, the thing about having the black background, I didn't mention this as well, but if you're new to my channel, this is another good tip. If you have a background color, you can always just paint over, like say these two bled together or a dropped paint or something on it. You can just scrape off what you can and then repaint your black background and start just that one section over rather than scrapping your entire project. You just delete that one little area that you needed to change and you add some background color. So that way there's not as much stress either. If you make a mistake or if you put something down that you don't want, you can always go back over it with black. There, our little guy is coming along nicely. So now I just have to pick out some purples. And I'm thinking just because we um, use the darkest on the outside of the rings, you can either go with a light purple to start off your purples or something that's more of like a pinky, pinkish purple, like a magenta um, or something that has a little bit more red to it. Um, or even you can carry out, we use the royal fuchsia in here, maybe that's what I'll do. And so we use the royal fuchsia, and if you want to keep carry that through your design, we can start with a dot right out here of the royal fuchsia. And that way too you're not getting too many colors, you know, rainbow obviously has all the colors, but you're not getting too, too many and bogged down with switching it up. and. To open up this okay so I'm gonna go with a medium sized tool and just kind of took a royal fuchsia on here and you can see the contrast with the blue that way and the same as if you were to go with a lighter purple lavender something like that I feel like this kind of pinky purple Fuchsia will help us give it a little pop here. And there's so many different directions you can go with your designs too. Like at this point, you know, you have the, the fuchsia down. You could always start some purples around here like we did against our green and just start purples there. Or you can start a whole new purple design here maybe with arcs around this or you can just kind of bring it to a point and leave some of that black negative space. You could add some swipes in here to kind of give it a little more movement in the design. So don't get bogged down and don't stress. It just is going to go in a different direction each time. So sometimes it's overwhelming the amount of choices. Just pick one and go with it. And the next time you're, you're feeling inspired to do another rainbow, do it the, the opposite way that you did from the last time. Give it an opportunity. So. Don't get too caught up in the details. Just kind of let it flow where you want it to go as you do it. Okay, I am going to go with some purple pizzazz. Just because this one kind of has a hint of like a little towards the, the red zone, but then it's got that pop of the purple that just is nice and bright. I'm going to do two dots, I think, on either side of the fuchsia that we just put down with the same size dotting tool. I'm just going to pick one little shade darker in the grape soda. Or 
grape juice, I guess it is. Grape juice Americana. And then I'll put a little bit larger down after those purples. The pizzazz that we just put down. Whoop, too much. It's going to drip down the side. And there you have your nice colorful rainbow. Well, you can see how versatile it is. And so now you could wait for this to dry and add top dots to make it look a little more 3D. You can add more colors to like raise it up, do lighter, darker in the larger circles. And that gives you a change up in the design as well. So I just feel like rainbows are fun and enjoyable and really versatile. So I hope you enjoyed doing this rainbow with me today. Again, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. If you're looking for kind of other varieties of what art I have out there. Obviously here I'm on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click subscribe. It'll give you notifications when I'm on again. If I go live or if I put on another video, you'll get a notification of that. And then if you're looking to purchase any of my art, and I have some of my paint supplies now available too in my shop. So we have the Petite Spotter, which is a nice little tiny, tiny dotting brush. I have sets of the dotting tools that are bent, angled as well. And then I of course have the Angle Spot Detailer brush, which I use quite often. Um, in the shop as well so all right everyone i hope you're all doing well i appreciate all the awesome feedback that you've given me and the decision i needed to make to kind of back out of things as much uh, with getting rid of patreon and just not being online as often but i really just appreciate all the feedback with you all and your understanding about how family comes first so you guys are my second family too with the art community and I will try to be on as much as I can. So thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy painting. <laughs>